Feels so good to be back. What's going on guys? David and I are back with another video. So sorry it took so long. Um, we've been working both in and out of the studio. We got some cool stuff in the mail. We got Pixel Buds in the mail. So we're planning on making videos over all that cool stuff. But first, we have to get through this iPhone 10 review because, hey, it's an awesome phone. So let's talk about it. Okay, so the iPhone 10 is special for a couple reasons. One, it's a radical design change compared to other iPhones. You lost the home button. And two, the iPhone is 10 years old. This is the 10 year anniversary of the iPhone. First one came out in 2007, and now we're all the way here in 2017 with an awesome new looking iPhone, and that deserves to be celebrated. So let's all give Apple a round of applause. Right guys? So hardware design changes on the iPhone 10. We're gonna go ahead and start with the build quality as far as what's been changed. So on the back, we have glass, which we saw in the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus, but there really hasn't been an iPhone that has a glass back since the iPhone 4 and 4S, right David? Mm -hmm. Right, and stainless steel on the edges as opposed to aluminum. And I don't even know how long it's been since that was a thing. I think the last time an iPhone had stainless steel was the 3GS? Probably. Maybe, I didn't own that iPhone, but it's been a very long time since Apple's put stainless steel on the edges as opposed to aluminum, and that is really cool. And of course they did bring back some of the other stuff that the iPhone 8 already had, 25% louder dual speakers and the IP67 water and dust resistance, and no headphone jack. So yeah, that's still a thing. I hope you like dongles, cause you're gonna need one to listen unless you have some AirPods. <laughs> okay, and the biggest design change to the iPhone 10, probably the whole entire reason why you bought the iPhone 10, the display. 5.8 inch super retina display that goes completely edge to edge. Now, Apple calls it super retina, but it's basically an OLED panel manufactured by Samsung that Apple took and tweaked to their own standards. Let me tell you, it is the best display on the market, hands down. Color reproduction and accuracy is phenomenal. Outdoor visibility is excellent. The display itself is damn near perfect. I don't really know of any other display that comes close to the accuracy, the vividness, the clarity. This display is absolutely top notch, no pun intended. So the display has kind of a strange resolution. It's sitting at 2436 by 1125 with a one million to one contrast ratio. Now the resolution is slightly off because of the poorly used joke in the last take. And it comes down to the fact that the iPhone 10 has a notch on the top of the display. Now the notch is important for a couple reasons. Um, because you have that edge to edge display, you no longer have a home button, which means you no longer have touch ID. Now you have to have some sort of security or authentication to get into your device. So Apple replaced touch ID with face ID. So the notch houses all the hardware necessary for face ID. And there's a ton of stuff in there besides just the earpiece and the front facing camera. There's a dot projector that shoots 30,000 dots onto your face. So the phone can get a full 3D mapping of your face in order to use it to help you sign into your phone. There's what, like an infrared light. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes into it to make sure that face ID works in all sorts of lighting conditions and to make sure that it works accurately as well. Now the cool part about it is you don't really have to wait for apps or developers to update their apps from Touch ID to work with Face ID because the, I guess software is smart enough to realize and replace it. So when I first got my iPhone 10, a lot of apps that used to use Touch ID immediately prompted for Face ID whether or not the app was updated for it. So for the first couple of days, uh, it was pretty noticeable. Every time I looked at the iPhone, I'm like, wow, that notch though. Um, after a while, you'll start getting used to it. It's kind of a love-hate relationship. I was kind of worried about media consumption, like watching YouTube videos when I first started. That's gotten a lot better, and to be completely honest with you, I don't notice a notch anymore, especially as more and more YouTubers are optimizing their videos to work well with the iPhone X's strange resolution. Um, so that's, that's all good and well. One thing I really love is there's a cool little um, feature in the software where whenever you have a notification and you turn on your phone, none of the notification information shows until Face ID authenticates your face. That part I think is really awesome. And then obviously once it authenticates your face, you can just swipe to open it and get right into the notification. One thing I really don't like is the notch creates two gaps or ears, whatever you wanna call them on the top of the display. Because of this, 
it can only show so much information. So whenever you unlock your device on the left, you'll see time and you'll see like an icon for location. On the right, all you see is your cellular signal, your Wi-Fi signal and the battery. Important information like battery percentage or Bluetooth or any other kind of relevant information you can only get to by swiping down from the top right to access control center. As someone who really likes to see their battery percentage right there at the top, it's kind of annoying, but at the end of the day, you get used to it after a few days. So just something to throw out there. It will take you some time to get used to some of the quirks that the notch brings, but overall, definitely not a deal breaker. And of course, the iPhone 10 brings over the same exact chipset used on the iPhone 8 Plus, which is the Apple A11 Bionic, which is Apple's first hexa-core processor. Three cores for low intensive tasks and three cores for high intensive tasks. The iPhone 10, just like the iPhone 8 Plus, is AR tuned. So as augmented reality becomes more popular, you're covered. Like I said, performance-wise, iPhone 10 screams. I mean, absolutely tears apart any benchmark you throw at it. I think the single core is like what, like a 6,000, David, and the multi-core is like just a little over 10,000. I mean, absolutely top-notch. <laughs> no, but um, you gotta, you gotta stop, right? <laughs> performance, incredible on the iPhone 10. Uh, class leading too. I don't think there's a single other phone on the market who can measure up as far as benchmarks go. Um, the only time you'll see the iPhone 10 kind of hiccup or stutter is probably related to issues with iOS 11 more than issues related to the chipset in the iPhone. So iOS 11 still needs some work. The iPhone 10 is more than capable for anything you throw at it. Okay, iOS 11. It is a little different on the iPhone 10. So I mentioned earlier, you don't have a home button, which was absolutely central to how Apple's software typically works. So now everything's been replaced with gestures. So to go home, you swipe up from the bottom of the screen to access multitasking or recent apps. You swipe up to the middle, hold for a couple seconds and your apps will pop up. If you don't feel like holding, you can swipe up and to the right or the left immediately and the multitasking apps or recent apps will open. If you wanna close out your recent apps, you'll push and hold on one and then you can start swiping up or you can push the red minimize button. Control center is accessed by swiping down from the top right corner and notifications are accessed by swiping down from the middle or down from the top left of the display. And of course, we wouldn't wanna leave out Siri. So the way you access Siri is by pushing and holding the now enlarged side slash power button. I think that's just about it, right, David? That covers everything? Yep. So, iOS 11, totally gesture-based on the iPhone 10. It takes a while to get used to. Once you do, though, you, you start to realize iOS kind of feels like it was made for gesture-based movement. It feels a lot more natural than just using a home button for nearly everything. It actually works really well, and I'm sure just like Face ID, it's only gonna get better as Apple releases more software updates in the future. So we mentioned that iOS 11 is by no means a perfect software, um, even a couple months now after its release, and it still holds true to this day. iOS 11 still has quite a few bugs that need to be squashed. So you would think that it would have negative impact on the battery, which with a lot of iPhones, even the 7s and the 7 Pluses, which came out last year, a lot of them are experiencing some pretty awful battery life with iOS 11. Even my iPhone 8 didn't have the best battery life whenever I had it. But with the iPhone 10, I haven't had any issues. Now, the battery is slightly larger compared to the iPhone 8, but it's smaller compared to the iPhone 8 Plus, but it still gets really good battery life. I typically don't have to top off the phone or put it on charge at any time during the day. It'll get you through a day's worth of solid use just fine. As far as charging the device goes, you have really three options. You can do the standard super slow charging with the five watt brick that comes in the box. You can do fast wire charging if you decide to spend at least 70 bucks on a USB wall adapter and a USB-C to lightning cable, or you can do wireless charging, which typically kind of transfers charge at the same five watt speed. Although there is a software update coming out in the near future that'll up it from five watts to seven and a half watts. So not really fast wireless charging, but not as slow wireless charging, which is an improvement. So. Yeah, and of course, cameras, right? The iPhone 10 has quite a few. We're gonna start on the front. So the front camera is a seven megapixel camera, f2.2 aperture, and it can record video in up to 1080p, which is pretty decent. Something that I like about the front-facing camera is that it can take 
portrait mode photos. And it actually took a lot of the portrait lighting effects from the iPhone 8 Plus's rear cameras, and you can now incorporate them in the front. As far as the quality of the portraits, though, not too great. Um, I probably wouldn't use them for your Instagram selfies and stuff like that, to be completely honest with you. There's still a lot of blur around the edges of the subject, um, but I'm sure as future software updates come out, hopefully this will get fixed. But without a doubt, the most popular feature of all the front hardware has to be an emojis. So the iPhone X uses a lot of that super smart hardware on the front in order to take a 3D map of your face, and it allows you to Basically make yourself into a 3D emoji, record yourself for up to 10 seconds, and send a clip to your friends in iMessage. Now it's really cool because it can take a lot of facial features in order to make the emoji look incredibly accurate. It can even track whenever you open your mouth or whenever you show your teeth. And of course, um, who wouldn't want to be this emoji? So there's 12 different emojis that you can use, but without a doubt the coolest one is the poop emoji. Who does not want to be a freaking poop emoji? But without a doubt, the most popular thing about Animojis is Animoji Karaoke. I'm sure you guys have seen it. You play a song in the background and then you sing. Now if you do this properly, it looks really good and it looks like the emoji itself is singing the song. I'd play one for you, but you know, copyright issues. So enjoy all these Animojis instead. Now to the rear cameras. There's two of them. And unlike the 8 Plus, they're actually vertically shaped instead of horizontally shaped. So like I said, two of them, one wide angle, one telephoto. Both of them are optically stabilized, which is a first as far as dual camera systems go on the iPhone. Now you can take portrait photos and you can also take portrait lighting photos with the rear camera and you can shoot video at 4K resolution in 60 frames per second. Now I don't know too many other flagship phones on the market that can actually shoot in 60 frames. I know quite a few can shoot in 30 frames, but I'm pretty sure the iPhone 10 is in a league of its own when it comes to shooting at 60 frames per second, which is really cool. Now how well the camera actually does, it does really well, but I still wouldn't give the iPhone 10 the best camera on the market. It's most definitely in the top three, um, but I still think as far as overall pictures go, you can't beat the Pixel this year. Um, but nonetheless, still an amazing camera. You're still in the top three, so you don't have to worry about missing out. David and I have a couple photos and videos that we've taken. Go ahead and take a look. I'm sure you guys are gonna enjoy them. Camera's pretty fantastic. So I think we just about covered all the bases for the iPhone 10. It's available in two colors, silver and space gray, which to be completely honest with you is more of a white and a black. The space gray will come with a super dark stainless steel around the edge. The silver is gonna come with a super polished stainless steel. Space gray shows fingerprints easy. Silver shows scuffs and scratches around the edges easier. So it's kind of like pick your poison as far as that goes. Two storage options, just like the 8 and 8 Plus, 64 and 256. And my goodness, the iPhone 10 starts at a starting price of $999 for the 64 gig variant and $1149 for the 256 gig variant. And if you wanna get Apple Care, that's an additional $200 regardless of which price point you go for. So regardless, you're spending at least $1,000 for this phone. Would I recommend it? I think I would only recommend it to Apple enthusiasts, people who are willing to pay a premium for having the future in their pocket. I am wholly convinced that the iPhone X's design is going to be the design of every iPhone coming out in the future. I wouldn't be surprised if next year we didn't get a single iPhone without a home button. But if you wanna get one now, if you basically wanna be an early adopter for the future, it will come at a premium. If you're okay with that, go for the iPhone 10. It's an amazing phone. If you're not okay with that, the 8, the 8 Plus, solid options, the 7 and the 7 Plus, dropped 100 bucks at each storage option as well. Still amazing options. So yeah, they're expensive. They're probably worth it to some people, probably not worth it to others, but I don't think you'll be disappointed if you go for the iPhone 10. And if you don't, you have options available to you. That's really the beauty of all the phones that we're working with in today's marketplace. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, be sure to leave us a like, subscribe, comment down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys very soon. Peace. Hey, bro, I have a question. What's up? So you know how the iPhone 10 has a retina display called Silver Retina, right? Yeah. What do you think it's gonna be called next year? Well, okay, so this year is the Super Retina display. Yeah. So it makes logical sense that next year it would be the Super Saiyan Retina display. <laughs> right? Right? Come on now.